You want to raise your game to the elite level. I'm talking the best that you can be. Go ahead and join my All Eyes DB Camp members area. I have over 200 videos and posts in there talking about everything from DB technique to drills to coverage breakdowns, everything you need to reach the absolute tip top of your game. I have a link to it down in the description. Go ahead and click that. Check it out. It's the best investment as a defensive back you will ever make. If you're a defensive back, coach defensive backs, or train defensive backs, then you absolutely have to own a copy of my ebook, 101 DB Tips. Need help covering slants? It's in the book. Need to know how to get out of your breaks faster? It's in the book. How to become a better tackler? It's in the book. What's the best way to train? It's in the book. If you're looking to put the clamps on wide receivers and stall the passing game, then this is the book for you. Where else are you going to find 101 of the best DB tips ever created? Get the book. Hit the link in the description and get your copy today. Greatness awaits you. Listen up to all my defensive backs out there. If you want to become an elite defensive back and get to the top of your game, there's five moves you're going to have to master as a defensive back. We'll talk about them today on DB Tip Clips. Did you guess what they are? Chances are you guessed some, but not all. Have no fear. We're going to talk about what all of those five moves are today. That you absolutely have to know if you are going to be an elite defensive back. These are the moves that you're going to be making out on the field more than any other. So it's in your best interest to dominate these moves, make them part of your subconscious. So while you're out there in the game playing, you don't have to think about doing them. That's what your training is all about. You're going to automate these moves so when the time comes, you can focus on other things like what the offense is actually trying to do to you. You don't want to be thinking about your footwork while you're playing the game. So I'm going to let you know what these five different moves are that you're going to need to know. You're going to do them enough in your training so that they're automated and they just happen just like that without you even knowing about it. You're going to practice them that much. You're going to put in your 10,000 hours as a defensive back primarily with these five moves I'm going to introduce to you today. All right. And if this is your first time here, kindly go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next video like like this one. All right, so what are these moves? I'm sure you know what number one is. It's backpedaling. Can you believe that? Yep, people still backpedal. Only the smart ones do it though. Definitely, if you're a safety, you have to backpedal. But let me start with you corners out there. There are people out there that coach, train, that are trying to talk you out of backpedaling. They want to turn you right away or soon after the play starts. You know who likes to see you out of your backpedal? It's the wide receivers. Yes, 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 yes. They love to see that defensive back turn his back and give him an opportunity for him to attack your blind spot. We love it when you're a wide receiver, but as a defensive back, the essence of playing DB is staying square. That's when you're in press. That's when you're playing off zone, whatever, trying to stay square as long as possible. Best way for you to do that is in your back pedal, and you won't stay in that back pedal very long if you don't work on it and become very good at it. It won't be long before that wide receiver is right on top of you, and you have to turn out of your back pedal anyway. Now they're going to attack your back. At least the really good ones will get you spinning all around, getting you flipping your hips unnecessarily, and now they can just run that whole wide receiver route tree and take advantage of you right off the bat. All right, so that back pedal is something that you're really going to have to learn, practice over and over. I know it can get kind of boring, seems kind of old school, but I'm here to tell you that turning your rear end to the sideline right now, right away, is just really not going to help you in the long run. It's really going to be a disaster for you, and you're going to find yourself frustrated. Yes, you may be able to cover a deep ball here or there, and that's the nine ball, but you won't be good against eight, seven, route, six, five. Everything else is going to be a real chore for you to cover. And soon, once you start getting worried about all those routes getting hit, you won't even cover the nine ball anymore. So the number one move is backpedaling. Learn how to get a really, really nice backpedal. The number two move is a weave. Yep, the cousin of the backpedal. So now that you've learned how to backpedal, you've got to be able to work a weave in there. Why? Because wide receivers will try to attack your leverage. You're lined up inside because you don't have help inside and you're playing off of that wide receiver, he's not going to just run straight up the field and then try to cross your face to go inside. He's going to try to get to your inside shoulder and attack your leverage before he makes any of those inside moves. And if you don't have a really good weave, guess what you're going to want to do? You're going to want to turn your shoulders and expose your back to that wide receiver attacking your blind spot. After all, you may think you know where he's going, but you're not entirely sure. Why not be able to weave, keep yourself square, and be able to break
break left or right for as long as you can. If you can stay in your back pedal and weave and get yourself 15, 20, 30 yards downfield, even if you're really, really good in that back pedal. Now, if that route breaks off, you have the equal ability to break left or right if you have a really, really good weave. Now, you may start off trying to do this in coverage and it doesn't feel good, doesn't feel comfortable and you're getting beat, have no fear. If you keep working that weave, you're gonna get better at it, better at it, you'll be able to stay in it longer, longer, you'll have more confidence in it. Trust me, guys, when I tell you, good weave is going to help you in coverage. That's corners, that's safeties. And you know what, safeties, when you guys are playing in the post and you're playing on the hash, having a really good weave helps you as well. Now, you may not be locked in one-on-one -on, -one on a guy, but you're also looking at that quarterback and you're trying to read him. If he looks left and you've got to open your shoulders to go left because you think the ball is going there and then he comes back right, now you've got a speed turn or completely do a hip flip and that takes longer for you to get back to the other side. If you can stay in a weave and just move left in your weave when he looks left and he comes back right, it's that much easier for you to now open your hips and head to where that ball is being thrown. Or how about if he's looking you left, looking you right and you're able to stay in a weave the whole time? That really, really frustrates and throws the quarterback off and maybe he'll just throw a ball right to you. So the number two move is weave. Practice that. Number three is a hip flip. Yep. After you've done your back pedal, you've done your weave and they're still coming down the field. Now it's time to open up. It's okay now after you've done all that to open up your hips. Now you've got to be able to hip flip because undoubtedly a receiver will take you one way and then try to go the other way. And when that happens, you're already open. It's in your best interest to have a good hip flip. All right. I know guys think speed turns look good, sexy, etc., etc. A speed turn allows you to turn your back to that wide receiver and now you're essentially blind let me just ask you guys this question would you at any point in time while you're covering a wide receiver just close your eyes for a second would you do that you probably wouldn't right wouldn't make a whole lot of sense that's essentially what you're doing when you execute a speed turn for about a second or so you're gonna have your back to that receiver you're gonna have the back of your helmet facing that receiver and you're not gonna see where he is receivers love that that's essentially closing your eyes and being blind to where the receiver is you know how you avoid those speed turns by having a really good hip flip. A lot of guys don't want to execute the hip flip because they're not comfortable with it. They feel like they lose speed in doing it. They feel like they're going to be out of balance. Not if you practice it though. And yes, you're going to have to put in the time and learn how to do it correctly. Again, I've got a lot of great information on that in the All Eyes DB Camp members area. The correct way to do a hip flip so that you don't lose speed and you don't fall off balance and you can stay glued to that wide receiver's hip. But it is essential. And some of you guys may know a hip flip as a zone turn. Don't get caught up in that term. I never call it a zone turn because guys need to use it in man coverage. So being able to face a guy, face a wide receiver and turn this way into him instead of having to do a complete turn and give him the back of your helmet is really, really going to help you. So the third move you're really going to have to execute, you're going to have to learn how to do and you're going to have to master is a hip flip. Number four, and you may not have thought about this, but you absolutely should have. And that is breaks. You've got to be able to come out of your breaks. Yep, it's great to cover a seven and eight and a nine route and all those deep routes, but you know what? More often than not, those routes are going to break off. You're going to get digs, curls, comebacks, slants, and all those other routes on the lower end of the tree. And if you're going to cover those and be able to get your hands on those balls, whether it's a pass breakup or an interception, you're going to have to be really, really good coming out of your break. First, you're going to have to be efficient. Second, you're going to have to be explosive out of your breaks. Best way for you to do that is practice them. How many steps out of the break? Two steps. Plant and replace. When you're efficient and you're doing this as good as you need to, that's exactly how it's going to operate. You're going to get two steps out of that break, a plant and a replace. Very, very important that you get it down to that science. And again, put your 10,000 hours in, work your breaks. Of course, all everything else applies, keeping your weight over your toes, keeping your hips low for you to be explosive out of that break. But breaks is the fourth move that you're going to really, really have to get good at. But it's not only your breaks out of your back pedal. Once you've been, your cushion has been pushed and you're open, and you're in your crossover run, you're going to have to learn how to come out of that break as well. Being able to plant and replace out of your crossover run, break downhill on a curl or a dig, or go break on a comeback, things of that nature, or a quick out are things you're going to have to learn. So while you're working on your breaks, it's not just your breaks out of your backpedal, it is your break out of your crossover run as well. So the fourth most important move you're
you're gonna have to learn are your brakes. And the fifth and final most important move is a kick slide. Yep, you're gonna need this for your press man coverage. A lot of guys out there at the line of scrimmage, the moment the wide receiver moves, they turn, they open, and they wanna run down the field with the wide receiver because they fare the deep ball. What that allows the wide receiver to do is run straight off the line of scrimmage, not waste any time, get right into his stem, and run the route the way that it's intended to. Well, there's no point in playing bump and run coverage or press man coverage if you're not going to disrupt the route. So if you're not gonna get hands on that wide receiver or you're not gonna widen his release, whether that's outside or inside, then you just wasted your time getting up there at the line of scrimmage. If you're gonna do this thing right, you're gonna have to be able to move him off the line. And the best way for you to be able to do that is to use the kick slide. Oftentimes when you lined up right in front of that wide receiver and press man coverage, he's not gonna run straight at you unless he's some big, burly, Gronkowski type tight end. And that's not what wide receivers usually are. They're either gonna try to go left or right of you and get vertical up the field as soon as possible. If you don't have a good kick slide, they're gonna be able to do that really fast, stay skinny going by you and allow themselves enough room outside if it's an outside route or enough room inside so they don't run into your safety or your linebacker or whatever your help may be inside and they're gonna have a field day against you. However, with a good kick slide, you are able to mirror that route, push that receiver inside too far, push him too far towards the sidelines and now it becomes a difficult pass for the quarterback to complete. So you really, really have to spend a lot of time working your kick slide, the good mechanics of a kick slide and that's another thing that I cover in the All Eyes DB Camp members area is the way to kick slide. It may look like an easy thing for you to do but there's some really serious important components to your kick slide that you really, really must learn. The devil is in the details especially at defensive back. It might look easy to you on TV, might look easy when you see some of these pros doing it, but there are some really, really small details in there that are going to allow you to play like a pro, allow you to be elite. It's things that you really, really must learn. But the bottom line here is you are going to have to practice that kick slide quite often so that you can be what you need to be in press man coverage. Unless you run a four flat or four 140 and you can just run down the field with everyone and that stuff doesn't matter. And even then, if you are that fast, think how much better you would be if you had a kick slide, all right? So there ain't no way around this. Kick slide is something you really, really need to have. And that's also the fifth thing that you must really master if you're gonna be an all-time great defensive back. And that's it. Obviously, there's more to playing defensive back, but if you can master those five moves, you're ready for anything else that's gonna come your way down the line as a defensive back. Everything else you're gonna do kind of starts with those five moves that we've talked about here. And just to review, you gotta be able to backpedal, you gotta be able to weave, you gotta be able to flip your hips, you've gotta be able to come out of your brakes, and finally, you gotta be able to have a kick slide, fellas. If you can master those five things, you're well on your way to reaching your ultimate level as a defensive back. Back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit the like button as well as subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a bunch of great DB content on here as I already do. There are a ton of videos on here right now and there are a ton more coming. Hit the bell so you don't miss out on the next one. Also, don't forget to take a look at the All Eyes DB Cat members area. Over 200 videos with everything that you need to be an elite defensive back. Training tips, coverages, workouts. We go over coverages in there, just everything that you need. And also, 101 DB tips. That's a book every defensive back should own. I'm just being quite frank with you. It's the best reference guide and source out there for you to learn everything that you need to learn as a defensive back, especially if you're a young guy just starting out playing this position. You definitely got to own that book. So I'll have links to both of those down in the description. Go ahead and check them out. And as always, All Eyes DB Camp. Consistency breeds results.